On the island of Java in Indonesia, poultry farmers faced a harsh reality that might be draining your bank account right now. The market demanded that rich, heritage-style flavor, but the rising cost of feed required industrial speed. They didn't wait for a miracle. They engineered a solution that we now know as the I Am Joper. They took roosters from their local heritage stock, true warriors that can withstand heat, rain, and local diseases, and crossed them with high-output industrial hens selected for record-breaking growth. The result? A bird that retains the firm texture and deep flavor that premium customers pay top dollar for, but hits market weight in just about 60 days. This is not a magic breed you buy at a store. It's a production system based on strategic genetic engineering. And today, you are going to learn how to apply this exact same strategy to your own flock right here in the United States, so you can stop being a hobbyist who just spends money on feed and start becoming a high-performance producer generating real profits. The mistake that 90% of backyard breeders make is trying to have one single bird do everything. They want a hen that lays 300 eggs, provides 5 pounds of meat, and also serves as the mother for next year's progeny. My friend, that sounds great on paper, but in terms of your bottom line, it's a financial disaster. The I Am Joper model teaches us that real profitability only appears when you have the courage to separate your breeding genetics from your final production. Successful farmers, those who actually live off their land and scale their businesses, never breed from the offspring of a terminal cross. They know the magic of efficiency only happens in the first generation. They protect their pure breeding stock like a treasure and produce uniform batches that sell like hotcakes. That is the power of specialization. If you want this to stop being an expense and start being the backbone of your family's income, you have to stop looking at your birds as pets and start seeing them as a strategic investment. To master this system and ensure no one sells you a false dream, we need to understand what is actually happening inside that chick's body when we make this cross, and that is called hybrid vigor, or heterosis. Don't be intimidated by the technical name, it's something you will see with your own eyes in the coop. It's that explosion of life and strength that occurs when you bring together two bloodlines that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Imagine your local heritage hen, the one that has survived everything, knows how to forage for her own food and has a bulletproof immune system. Now imagine a purebred rooster, like a white Cornish or a Plymouth Rock, which has been selected by experts for decades solely to gain weight and develop muscle at a record pace. When you bring them together, a biological spark occurs. The offspring inherits the ruggedness of the mother and the growth machinery of the father. But why do they grow faster if they eat the same feed? This is what you must understand to manage your business. Their bodies are genetically more efficient at processing grain. Their intestines act like a high-performance sponge, absorbing nutrients at a speed that a purebred or a standard heritage bird simply cannot match. They utilize every single ounce of corn and every gram of protein to build tissue. While a standard chick wastes energy just trying not to get sick or feathering out slowly, a terminal cross chick uses all that energy to manufacture breast meat and thighs. You will notice this from the very first week of life. You'll see chicks with thicker legs, wider chests, and a level of activity and veracity that will force you to keep a close eye on the feeders. It's like putting a Ferrari engine into a heavy-duty truck chassis. You have all the power to race, but with the ruggedness needed to stay on the road. Let's talk about the pieces you already have in your own backyard to build this model. If you are in the US, you don't have to go to Asia to find these birds. The gold is right in front of you. If your goal is to sell premium meat, crossing a Cornish rooster over your best heritage hens is a gold mine. The Cornish provides that massive breast conformation that the customer wants to see and feel when they buy a heavy roaster. And your heritage hen will inject that yellow skin color and that intense flavor that pale supermarket chicken can never match. But be careful. The selection here is up to you as an expert. You don't just cross any hen with any rooster. You have to choose your largest females the ones with the widest backs and the best health records. To those queens, you add a purebred rooster that is a literal meat tank. The result will be a bird that in 10 to 12 weeks will have the weight of an industrial bird, but with the artisanal quality that allows you to charge a premium price in your community. But let's not forget the egg business, because the terminal system is also the key to filling egg cartons every single day. If your goal is to produce pasture-raised eggs at a large scale, what you need is laying persistence. That hen that lays an egg today and takes a three-day break because she went broody or because the weather changed is useless to your business. To fix that, you're going to cross a pure production line rooster such as a Rhode Island Red or a Leghorn with your best backyard heritage hens. What you're going to get is a heavy-duty layer. She will inherit from the father the ability to lay nearly 300 eggs a year, but from the mother, she will inherit the hardiness to not get sick at the first temperature swing. The advantage here is business uniformity. You're going to have a flock of one or two hundred hens that all start laying at the same time, with the same egg size and the same shell color. That's what gives you authority when dealing with a restaurant or a local health food store. They need to know that you have the capacity to deliver the exact same product every single week without fail. 
Now, for this system to be a success and not turn into a mess where you lose the genetics you've worked so hard for, you must physically divide your farm into two totally separate worlds, the breeding core and the production unit. The breeding core is your most precious treasure. It is the factory of your factory. This is where your purebred breeders live, the ones that are not for sale. You have to treat these birds like high-performance athletes. Their job is not to get fat for the pot. Their job is to produce fertile eggs with unsurpassed vitality. You have to watch their weight with a scale in your hand. A rooster that gets too heavy loses interest in the hens and starts having leg problems. And a hen that is too fat will lay eggs with weak shells or simply stop ovulating because the internal fat obstructs her system. This is where you apply strict selection and culling. Only the top 10% of your birds deserve to be in this core. On the other side, and hopefully in a completely different coop or with a solid fence in between, is the production unit. This is where the explosion of money happens, where your local jopers or your meat and egg batches for sale are located. In this area, the management changes completely. There are no names for the birds here, there are only numbers and results. You have to keep a daily logbook and record everything, how much feed they ate today, how much water they drank, and how much the batch weighed at the end of every week. If a meat batch isn't hitting the weight targets according to your plan, you can't just sit around and wait to see if they look better tomorrow. You have to act. Are there cold drafts? Is the water hot or dirty? Does the bedding smell like ammonia? In a professional production unit, every single day counts. Every day that a chicken stays in the coop longer than planned without gaining weight is money slipping through your fingers. The discipline here must be military grade. Every bird born in the production unit has an exit date marked on the calendar from day one. Let's talk about the metric that separates the farmers who thrive from those who end up broke. The feed conversion ratio, FCR. I know it sounds like something only engineers say, but it's simply knowing how much it costs you to produce one pound of product. The average hobbyist throws the grain out, looks at the feeder, and hopes the birds grow whenever they feel like it. You, as the manager of your farm, are going to know that thanks to the hybrid vigor of your terminal crosses, your birds are going to spend much less on feed to reach their ideal weight. Imagine that a standard heritage chicken in your area spends 5 pounds of feed to give you 1 pound of meat in a 6-month process. That is a financial black hole. With the terminal cross system, you're going to cut that number down to half the feed, and you're going to achieve it in half the time. That massive saving on the feed bill is what will give you the capital to buy automatic incubators, improve your housing, or provide a better future for your family. Money in poultry farming isn't just made by selling high, it's made by producing with surgical efficiency. To truly scale up and move from being a small producer to being the leader in your region, you have to master capital rotation. This is pure business logic. In the time it takes your neighbor, who is still breeding the old-fashioned way, to raise one single batch of slow, uneven birds that cost him a fortune in feed, you, applying the terminal model, will have moved two or even three full batches to the market. Your money doesn't stay buried or asleep in the coop for half a year waiting for the chicken to be ready. Your money goes in, turns into meat quickly, and comes back to your hands with a profit to be reinvested. That is what a real entrepreneur does. It doesn't matter if you start today with just enough space for 20 chicks. What matters is that the system is correct. When you see the numbers in your logbook at the end of the first cycle and compare what you spent against what you sold, you are going to realize that you have been wasting your time for years. But be very careful, because there is a deadly trap that many breeders fall into due to a lack of knowledge, and that is the temptation to keep the offspring of these terminal crosses for next year, because they look so beautiful and strong. Listen to me carefully. Never do it. If you cross a terminal hybrid with another hybrid, the genetics will fall apart. The progeny of that second generation, what we call the F2, will come out completely uneven. Some will grow slow like the grandfather, others will be weak in health like the great-grandfather, and you will suddenly lose all the competitive advantage you had gained. The magic of hybrid vigor only happens with full force in that first direct cross between your pure breeding core and your heritage birds. If you want your business to be sustainable and the quality of your product to stay high, you must always go back to your breeding core to get the fertile eggs for every new production batch. That discipline of not mixing the factory with the final product is the red line that separates those who get wealthy from those who end up saying chickens don't make any money. I know all this sounds like you have to be stricter and that the work becomes more serious, but it is the only way for every drop of sweat and every hour you spend in the coop to be worth it at the end of the month. By using the hardiness of your heritage hens in these crosses, you are designing birds that can truly enjoy being outside, that can pasture, forage for insects and have a dignified natural life, but that have that internal genetic engine to be productive. We aren't creating a cold factory farm industry, we are creating intelligent, animal respectful and highly profitable production for the independent farmer. You are proving that it is possible to have supreme heritage quality with the efficiency of modern professional poultry farming.
you are rescuing the value of local breeds but boosting them with science. The math in the coop doesn't lie. If your birds produce faster, your risk decreases drastically. Less time for the birds in the coop means fewer days they can get sick from a virus brought in by the wind, fewer days of predator risk, and fewer days of weather uncertainty. By applying the terminal model, you are financially shielding your farm. You are offering your community a product that big supermarket chains can never match. A chicken with real flavor, with a firm texture, raised by someone they know, but at a price the customer can afford, and that leaves you with a fair profit for every pound that leaves your gate. That is called creating a brand with authority. It's becoming the poultry reference in your area that everyone seeks out because they know your birds are simply superior. To jump to the next level, do not be held back by not having the perfect barn or the high-end tech you see in big industrial operations. The technical knowledge and the strategy are already here in your hands. Take action today. Do not wait until tomorrow. Take inventory of what you have. Select your 10 best heritage hens, find that purebred rooster that will give you the muscle boost you need, and start with your first small test batch. Mark every egg with the date it was laid, put them in the incubator with care or place them under your best broody hen, but track them with separate accounting. Watch the offspring grow day after day with that strength that only hybrid vigor provides. Weigh them every Sunday and convince yourself of the results. The day you take your first batch of terminal crosses to the market in a time frame that once seemed like a dream, that day you will realize that the only limit on your poultry business's growth was the one you had been setting yourself due to a lack of a professional system. Take action today. Select your breeders with a critical eye, organize your physical spaces to separate genetics from production, and get ready to see your passion transform into a solid, respected, and profitable business that will bless your family for years to come. If this content has managed to open your eyes and has given you the necessary boost to level up and professionalize your flock, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share this knowledge with other breeders who are also ready to grow. Leave your action plan in the comments section. What specific breeds are you planning to cross to create your own I Am Joper adapted to your area? I want to read every single one of your experiences, and let's keep growing together as a community of poultry leaders who not only love their birds but also know how to thrive and generate wealth with them. Remember always that success is not a matter of luck. It's the inevitable result of a brave decision, disciplined execution, and a constant professional strategy. The future of your farm is in your hands, and the moment to start the transformation is right now. To your success, fellow breeder. See you next time.